Hello everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our last Minx Monday for 2015. Uh, and while I wish I could show you guys the bag that I'm currently using, I am currently not using anything <laughs> because I took my items out and I have yet to decide which bag I'm going to be rocking. I'm thinking maybe the, um, the artsy. I don't know. I seem to have really started to swoon over that bag within the last couple of weeks. Uh, and and um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm sorry, you guys. I wish I had a bag to show you. All right, so let's get started with the very first question from Tutu Rote. I'm pretty sure that's wrong. <laughs> I just went to the Louis Vuitton store <clears throat> to get a repair done. Even after calling the location and confirming I can bring in an item, they gave me a ton of grief once I got there about how they don't do repairs during the holiday season. They claimed it takes too long to access the piece and they are too busy to deal with that issue, which requires an appointment. I don't live close to a Louis Vuitton store, which really weighed on my patients. I was wondering if you have ever heard of such a thing. It really put a bad taste in my mouth since we spent quite a bit of money on their pieces and their customer service was relentless. So disappointing. Uh, I have heard of this and I'm actually in the exact same boat. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but I told you guys that I got the uh, replacement or the removable pouches replaced on all of my Josephine wallets. Okay, so I got the Damia Ben back and I got the monogram back. I was waiting on the Damia Zor because um, it was crooked or there was an issue with it. So I, uh, I decided to get another one. I think I asked for them in October. I got my Ben and my monogram I think at the beginning of November, I can't remember when I did the video for the repairs reveal. It is now the end of December and I still haven't gotten it. I remember I talked to the store manager. Uh, she also tends, uh, she, she's also my sales associate at one of the Louis Vuitton stores in San Diego. And, um, you know, I just, I just asked, I already knew, uh, beforehand that it, it wasn't going to happen before Christmas or anything like that, uh, for me to get the Demi Azure piece back. And she said, you know, I'm really sorry. You know, this, it's, it's super, super busy. Kind of the same thing that they told you. And, uh, you know, I, I was like, okay, that's, it's not a big deal. It's not like I'm using that wallet right now. Now I can under, I can definitely understand the frustration if it's a bag that you're currently using. Uh, and then, uh, you know, to a certain extent, I think it might be a blessing in disguise. And the reason why I say that is because I feel that if they did do repairs during the holiday season, that if they're trying to make as many pieces as they can and they're repairing and, uh, you know, they're just going through, they get tons and tons of thousands of orders. I'm sure. I just have a feeling that maybe they wouldn't pay as much attention to the piece that's being repaired. And, you know, what if, what if, um, what if they miss something or what if, uh, you know, the, the stitching's wrong and maybe then that will, uh, you know, that'll cause it to have problems later on, even more so, even after the repair, you know? So that's, that's kind of my thought process. That's my positive thinking on this situation that hopefully that's why they're doing it. Uh, but like I said, I, I think, I think what the, what the sales associate told you that they're too busy. I think that is, I think that's wrong because, you know, a customer never wants to hear that the the place where they're purchasing from is too busy for them. Uh, I think that that was in bad, uh, you know, it was bad how she said that she shouldn't have said anything remotely like that. Uh, just maybe give you more so of a reason as to why they did it. Maybe it's because of what I said. I don't know. Maybe there's a different reason. Maybe there's a better reason, but it would have been nice if she would have said that. Um, and my sales associate kind of said the same thing that they're really busy, but she didn't say that they're too busy for, uh, for my repair. You know what I mean? So she kind of, <laughs> she kind of tiptoed around it in the same, uh, the same instance, but I, I really wish I knew exactly why they don't do that. So hopefully it's my reasoning. Hopefully it's because they want to make sure that our pieces look absolutely fabulous and therefore they want to take their time with them after the holiday season when there isn't so much, uh, that they have to, you know, keep, uh, keep reducing. So hopefully that's the reason why. Uh, okay. Cat Lux Love 8811. My question is how do you keep your Chanel shoes in good condition with use? My main concern is the creasing on the leather, the heel on the outer sole of the, sh of the shoes. Uh, okay. So I brought mine out so we can have some eye candy. These are the, the espadrilles that I use the most. I think I gravitate towards these. Um, oh my goodness. I used them yesterday and you will see, oh my goodness. <gasps> I didn't notice. I am not very careful with them. I I thought I was going to be really, really careful, but 
you just can't with these because they're so soft. The lambskin, you know, you will start to see the creasing here, and I'm sure that's what you're talking about. Um, and you know what I do is I always stuff them after I'm done using them, no matter what. Uh, you can either put them in the box, but I always suggest you take them out of the box because you want the leather to be able to breathe. Um, but if... Um, if you can, make sure that you keep it stuffed with the tissue paper that it came in, or if not, get some other tissue paper, uh, just so that they don't lose their shape. Because while you're using them, it's going to, it might crease a little bit, especially when you first put them, put them in. I know that when I first put them, you know, put them on my shoes, the heel, I would start to just kind of, I felt like I was crunching this and I was devastated. I was like, oh no, I'm going to ruin these. But uh, I noticed that once I, stu I started stuffing them or I left the stuffing in there, it's not as noticeable. So that's something that you can definitely do. Uh, and they're a little bit wider on the top part, I've noticed. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's just because I use them so, so much. Uh, but I definitely would suggest if you can do that just to make sure they look as great as possible but just keep in mind because it is leather it will soften over time and it's going to get to the point where these will get really really creased hopefully this will you know really prolong that or it will really help it from not happening so quickly uh but i have a feeling that it might start you know it might already be happening as you can see right there with the little creasing so i would just stuff them uh until until you start seeing the creasing and we're to the point where you notice that's not really doing anything to it. Okay. Uh, Kyle Cheeseman, what do you think about the Louis Vuitton leather bracelets? Um, I like their leather bracelets. Uh, I have noticed though that a lot of the, especially with the, with like, well, I brought this one out so we can take a look at it. Even though mine is canvas on the outside, it has leather on the inside and you have the gold tone hardware. Uh, I have noticed that the leather uh, or the uh, bracelets, the hardware tends to tarnish the quickest more than any SLG, more than any handbag. So I, I, the only reason I think I, uh, that happens is because you have all the oils that, um, you know, we have all the oils on our skin, so maybe it transfers, and therefore it causes it to tarnish a little bit quicker. But I really do like them. I think they're very, very cute. Some of them tend, tend to be a little overpriced, in my opinion. And uh, this Nano, I think I've used it a handful of times. I always forget about it, probably because I leave it in its dust bag, and it's just sitting up there with the rest of my bracelets. Uh, but I think they're really cute. I think it really adds uh, a lot of fun to any outfit, and uh, especially the, I think it's called the Keep It Bracelet bracelet. Is it the keep it or the lock me bracelet? I don't remember, but one of them is so cute. It has a little, uh, little luggage tag. It is canvas. Uh, but I think they're cute. Like I said before, uh, there, some of them are just a little overpriced and just be careful that, uh, these might tarnish a little bit quicker. And another, uh, another thing is that they don't hold their resale value as well as they should, especially for the price that we pay in the beginning. So, um, that's also just, something to, uh, to take note of if you wanted to. <laughs> uh, okay. Katrina Silva's after many, many months of research on videos, what, which do you think is the best crossbody for Louis Vuitton? I have even seen where they have put a speedy strap on a portobello. Um, you know, I think it would be unfair for me to say that there's only one one crossbody that just, you know, is better than all of them, especially because I haven't been able to interact and I haven't owned uh, a lot of the crossbodies out there because I'm personally, I'm not a big crossbody fan, but I can say from personal experience that the Pochette Matisse has to rank up there with one of the top uh, five, if not the top three. Uh, I really like the Pochette Matisse because you have, um, you know, the adjustable strap has a lot of those little, um, the adjustments so that if you're a little bit taller, if you're, if you're a little bit shorter, it really caters to any size of height of, you know, that the person is that they're, that they're thinking about getting, uh, the person who is thinking about getting it, it really caters to any, any, any height is what I'm trying to say. My goodness. Uh, and it has the compartments. It has the microfiber interior. It is such a beautiful bag and it is definitely one of my top, um, I'd have to say probably one of my top five bags because it, I mean, it's versatile, it's comfortable, your hands free. There's just so many positives to it. I know there are some negatives, especially because I've had to get it replaced, uh, before, but besides that, I think that that has to be one of the top ones. And I'm, like I said before, I'm sure there's a lot out there that are still wonderful, but unfortunately I haven't had the opportunity to be able to interact with them. Uh, so 
for right now, I will say that the Pochette Matisse has to be one of the best, definitely. And for any of you guys out there that have one of your favorite crossbodies, whether it's the Portobello, or not the Portobello, the, um, oh goodness, what's it called? The, the Turin, the Turin, the, uh, what is the other one? My goodness. I am drawing the biggest blank right now. <laughs> Whatever it is. If you guys have any other crossbody bags that you absolutely love, please let us know in the comments down below. Uh, so hopefully if uh, Katrina Silvas wants to add a crossbody to her uh, collection, then hopefully our comments will be able to help her out. Okay. Sizzlina. I have a jumbo black caviar Chanel and I'm looking to add another jumbo and caviar leather, but I'm really not sure which color I should add add next. I, I would appreciate any suggestion. Um, hmm. Well, I have heard, uh, rumors. I think, uh, you also asked me this, that there, that the beige Claire might be getting, uh, discontinued from Chanel for their caviar, for their caviar leather. Uh, and I had, you know, I had one sales associate say that they're going to get rid of it. And I had another one say that they're going to bring it back, uh, as a seasonal color. So I don't know if that's necessarily true. You never know with Chanel, right? Uh, but, uh, I was going to say that what if you went, obviously this, they always have the black, right? So you have the black, the beige Claire or the beige. Uh, some of the stores still ha still carry them. I know the red, re red for me. <laughs> it would be no surprise for me to get red for for another jumbo uh, and caviar. But you can always go with one of their seasonal seasonal colors, whichever one that might be. I think right now they have um, a really nice fuchsia, uh, a red, a purple, and maybe. I think those are the only three for now, but as I said before, they're always bringing out different caviar colors for, or even lambskin for their seasonal periods. Um, so you never know, but personally I would add a pop of color, uh, you know, and says the girl who gets all these black bags, right? <laughs> but you know, with a pop of color and a different colored hardware, you have the best of both worlds. So you have something that really livens up any outfit if you're wearing all black or if you're wearing a lot of dark colors. Uh, and then if, uh, if you wear silver hardware one day, if you wear gold hardware or something like that, you can always play with it. So I think adding a little bit of variety with different colors would be fantastic, especially with the, the color of the hardware. I really should take, <laughs> I really should take a spoonful of my own advice, right? <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to expand. <laughs> I'm trying to get out there and not just hoard the black colored bags. Um, okay. V, I have a Demi Azor Emily wallet with a white button. It has only been a few months and the white button has gotten very dirty and I want to get it replaced. However, I don't, I don't want the white button because of the same, then the same problem will occur. Do you think Louis Vuitton will replace it with a gold button for me? Uh, I think it really depends on the sales associate. Uh, obviously if you have, uh, the older Emily's, the ones that did have the gold hardware, it wouldn't be a problem. But if you have a really, really awesome sales associate, they might be able to do that. Definitely. Uh, especially if you have uh, major concerns, which def I mean, that is a major concern. The fact that it's dirty, cause then the button will look you know, brown or gray over time. And then the rest of the wallet will still look that, that beautiful, uh, white. So yes, definitely. Uh, I would definitely ask your sales associate, see what they have to say, and hopefully they'll be able to help you out with that. Uh, okay. Uh, how do I pronounce this? Uh, Debla Abel, I think I was wondering if you could talk about the speedy bandolier in Empreinte leather. I'm looking to get an everyday casual bag. If the speedy bandolier in Empreinte is the speedy bandolier in Empreinte worth the money? Does it hold up in resale value? Would you get the 25 or 30? I am five foot three. Which color would you recommend? What are your thoughts about wearing it with the shoulder strap versus the crook of your arm? <clears throat> okay. Um, the speedy bandolier in Empreinte, I would say old many would have said get the 30, but the Empreinte Speedies are a little bit bigger than the classic Speedy <clears throat> and the opening is a lot uh, more generous because you have dual zippers. So the 25 might be absolutely perfect, especially if you're 5'3". Uh, and I would, personally, I would get black, <laughs> even though I just said get color, right? Uh, who understands? I mean, or maybe I'd get the Cerise uh, because the Cerise is just gorgeous. Um, do they even offer the Cerise in the Empreinte? I think so, right? think so. Maybe it's just the 30. I don't know. Um, is the speedy bandolier and op prompt worth the money? How much does it retail for? I think the 30 retails for 2,800 maybe. 
or $2,900 and the other one's $2,700. It is quite, quite pricey. Um, but you have to remember it is literally all leather. It is all leather. Uh, it has beautiful, beautiful hardware and you have, um, you know, that crossbody strap that allows you to be very, very versatile. The only thing I will say about the Speedy Bandolier in Emprunt is the fact that uh, when you first get it, the embossing might be really, really deep. It might be very prominent. And then over time, because it is leather, it will start to stretch out a little bit and to the point where it won't be as, um, it won't, the LV, the, the monogram won't be as deep as when you first got it because you're using it so much. So it might tend to slouch as well because uh, even though it does have great structure because of the way that it's built, with, um, it's not just one continuous piece of leather. Uh, it will tend to, to slouch just a little bit over time. But remember, as I said before, the embossing is the most important because it won't be as deep. It won't be as prominent and you will really be able to see that it just kind of, um, it just loosens up over time. Uh, so if that doesn't bother you, then I think, I think they're great. I, you know, I have, I have seriously thought about adding a speedy bandolier to my collection in Emprunt for the longest time. I was looking at some of my, some of my pictures on Instagram and I think it was a year and a half ago. I thought about adding the black Emprunt, go figure. Uh, and I, there's just, it's just a, it's such a beautiful, beautiful bag. Some of them don't hold their resale value because of uh, it depends on the person, the previous person, if you're, if, especially if you're getting it pre-loved, if the person that had it before you doesn't really care for it and they just use it, I mean, they, they use it like any other bag, it'll start to wear a lot quicker than most any other, um, any other, you know, canvas or anything like that. So that's something to take into consideration, especially because it has such a high price tag. Some of them don't hold their resale value. Some of them do. Uh, I have noticed that the black is always, honestly, even though I always say go for color, or get a, another color if you have a lot of black bags. Uh, I've noticed that the black holds the race of value the best. Any other color, they're fantastic. They're great to look at, but not everyone wants, um, you know, a, an Orient or the uh, or the Navy or anything like that. So just be very, very careful. Uh, and I think that's probably why I'm so apprehensive as to adding it to my collection because they're so, you know, I, I see it from the flip side. I see it as I'm trying to sell... Uh, if I was to sell it and some of the, the, some of the people that I've had to come in contact with that they, they don't get anywhere near what they paid. You know what I mean? So we're talking anywhere from maybe anywhere from five to an $800 price difference. Uh, but obviously if you go through online consignment shops, then you will get a lot less because, um, they have to make a profit off of it as well. Um, but I think it might be difficult as an everyday bag. I think they're great. And another thing about Emprunt leather is the fact that you can wear it in the rain, in the sun. It doesn't matter. It, I mean, you don't have to worry about any patina. You don't have to worry about any vaquetta. Excuse me, nothing like that. But if you use it as an, as an everyday bag, literally for, you know, for like six months, even if you're very, very careful with it, it will start to wear a lot quicker. So just keep that in mind. Uh, okay. Pixie love 87. What do you think about the Alexander Wang mini Rocky in the ox blood? I know it retails for five ninety eight, but it is on sale for two thirty nine. Do you think it's a good buy? Uh, what do I think? You know, I'm, let me just tackle one at a time. The mini Rocky, I... I think it's really cute. I personally don't like it because of the opening. The opening really, really bothers me. The color Oxblood, oh my goodness, I fell in love with it. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but I purchased, um, my hubby gave me for my birthday, the Alexander Wang um, Rocco bag in the Oxblood, and it just didn't end up working out. So I ended up returning it. The color is beautiful. It is just this, I mean, this gorgeous, gorgeous Merlot burgundy color. Oh, it's beautiful. I absolutely love that color. And, uh, if it retails for five ninety eight, do I think it's worth it for two thirty nine? Absolutely. I know that I personally, I will not buy a Rocco bag or an Alexander Wang bag for its full resale value. Uh, especially because I've seen it in a lot of other, uh, online consignment shops and they're half the price. So uh, I think the Rocco bag was on a very famous, uh, 
a consignment shop. They retail for $9.95 and they had it for $495. So, you know, that's a huge, huge difference. So if you can get it at half off already and have it be brand new, heck yes, I think that's a great deal. Definitely. Um, but I do, I can't appreciate them, but Rocky bags are personally not for me, but that's a great, great price. Definitely. Uh, okay. Laura Greenfield. Do you ever feel that by displaying your bags in the open, it makes it it makes it an easy grab and go for thieves. I decided to hide some of my bags just in case. Thoughts? Um, I, you know, you never know. Um, hopefully I never have to, and hopefully that never happens. Uh, but I actually, I never have my blinds open or my windows open or anything like that. It's only, I only leave them open when I'm filming. That's the only time. I really like the natural light that I get in here. But for the most part, my blinds are always, always closed. Um, I have these, uh, they're not twinkling lights, but these little lights that I got from Ikea on the roof of my, of my room. And then I have it on the Eiffel Tower that you guys see back there. So I think that, I think that gives me enough light, maybe not, uh, to be able to do what I have to do when I'm in here, but never, I never, never leave them open. So maybe that's a good thing. Uh, but I haven't really, haven't really thought about that till right now, <laughs> to be honest. So, uh, I, yes, I, if I left my windows open, definitely, it would be like, what is that? Oh, a wall of Louis. Yes, that would be bad. Uh, loves bags. I'm thinking about purchasing my first Mon Mono piece from Louis Vuitton with the passport cover. I don't, with a passport cover. I don't plan on using it for a passport, however, as I've yet to need one. Wondering if you'd recommend this piece as a small wallet to get a little slice of the Mon Mono dream. And if so, what do you think would fit or how could it be organized as a little wallet? Not sure if you own this piece or if you would recommend this purchase to be used that way. Uh, the Mon Mono passport cover retails for $480 here in the States. And uh, I think it would be a great little mini wallet, especially if you're going compact or just as you said before, if you wanted to get a little uh, slice of the Mon Mono dream. Uh, definitely. You know, it might be uh, because it's a little bit more open, it might be a little bit hard to keep uh, the cash in there. So you have to be very minimal with the cash or make sure it's folded in the, uh, in the right hand side of it. Um, <clears throat> and you have three slots for it. I think it's great. Any time that we can get any SLG and have it be versatile and be able to use it as something else. I think that's fantastic. Uh, you know, you guys know that, uh, when I used to have my, my, uh, my agenda PM in monogram, I used that as a wallet, uh, when I used to carry it in my, in my monogram Eva clutch all the time, you know, and I thought it was great because in a sense I was killing two birds with one stone. And another great thing is it, should you ever need a passport in the future? And if you ever wanted to travel, you already have the piece before it, you know, before it increases in price, which thankfully <gasps> we didn't have a price increase after the one earlier this year. <laughs> I'm so happy because they always have a price increase twice a year. Look at it. Look like I said three twice a year. <laughs> so exciting. But anyways, I would definitely go for it. Uh, you know, it adds a lot of personality to, you know, it kind of reminds me of the pocket agenda. Uh, but I think it's great. Definitely go for it. I know a lot of people use the pocket agenda as a little mini wallet. So if you can get the passport cover as the mini wallet, definitely. Uh, okay. And last question. Uh, I have two, two more questions. I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Uh, hectic in heels. So I'm going to purchase the speedy 30 and monogram, but I wanted to know how often I should or shouldn't carry the bag. I want it to patina nicely, but I don't want to wear it out. Uh, okay. So you're getting the 30 monogram. Congratulations. Uh, what I would do when I first got my 35 monogram, I used it to death, to death. And, um, I think I might've even used it for like three months solid, maybe four months, just straight through. Cause I was so excited about it. Uh, and I never had any issues with it. Even, you know, years later, my patina was still perfect. I think that as long as you, as long as you don't, uh, use any lotion and you're very mindful about, uh, what you're grabbing and then you grab your bag, I think you should be fine. You definitely, you know, especially with the price of these bags, you want to be able to enjoy them. You don't want to just, you know, spend this type of money on a bag and then just say, well, I don't want to ruin it. So it has to sit there for, you know, it, I can't use it as often as you should definitely use it. Um, and, and, 
make it worth its price. Make the make the bag work for you, definitely. And I think that as long as you're mindful about the things that I um, that I mentioned before, that you should be okay. You know what I mean? Because as I said before, we're putting a lot of money on on these bags, and I think it was a few minks Mondays ago. Uh, one of uh, someone asked that one of their sales associates said that you're only supposed to use the bag on special occasions and not use it that, that often. I don't think so. I've known people that have one Louis Vuitton bag and they have used it for years, years. Obviously, you know, the older the bag is and the more that they use it, it'll start to patina a lot quicker. Uh, but <clears throat> one thing I will advise you is, um, if you can, if you want to take my advice, when you first get your, your monogram piece or any piece that has Viqueta on the handles, make sure you leave it out in a room, not necessarily, not necessarily that gets direct sunlight, but just a normal room. It could be your living room or anything like that. Leave it out with its handles out uh, for a few days. And even though you won't be able to see a patina right then and there, it'll start to kind of coat the bag a little bit so that it has a protective patina, if that makes any sense. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know, getting brand new naked Viqueta and then just grabbing it. And all of a sudden you see, you know, the oils of your hands or you see anything like that. Uh, so if you leave it out for a few days, let it breathe out and just get natural sunlight in the room that, that you have it in. Uh, it, it, it forms a protective layer. I remember that one of my sales associates told me that a long time ago. And ever since I've been listening to that, I haven't had any issues and it seems that my items seem, seem to patina a lot nicer, a little bit more even. So if you want to, you can follow that advice. <laughs> uh, all right. Ellen Haas. I just want to know, as uh, a lot of YouTubers have had issues with this, do you ever delete any of your comments? Uh, I do. I definitely do. And that is the last question for Minx Monday. I do delete them. And the reason why that is, is it's not because I'm trying to hide someone from saying something about me, but you know, at the end of the day, it's my channel and I will not stand for someone insulting me and being rude. And it, to me, it's like having someone come into my house and just totally just go to town and tell me all these things about me, uh, which I will not stand for. If I ever see someone being nasty to someone else, I will delete that comment as well because I don't want to have this... <clears throat> you know, this massive uh, craziness going on about this, this person said this, this person said that. That's not what my channel is about. Uh, as you guys know, uh, I don't, I don't address the neg negativity. I very seldomly do because I, I don't care about the negativity. If I see something bad, I'll just get rid of it. I'll block that person from commenting on my channel and I'll just move on. I don't give it much thought. You know what I mean? But I will never, ever stand for someone just because I'm on YouTube doesn't mean that someone has the right to just be completely nasty to me. And, you know, some people say it comes with the territory. I don't, I, I don't necessarily agree with that because yes, I am putting myself out there and thankfully I do have very, very thick skin, but, uh, you know, some comments are just still, there's no reason for some of the things that I've read. So yeah. Heck yeah, I'll delete them. It's my channel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday. I'm sorry I got tongue-tied, but I, I feel better. So thank you guys for all the well wishes from my last Minx Monday. I did a lot. Of, I took a lot of your guys' recommendations, and my throat feels a lot better. But somehow I feel that I'm all foggy up here. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? I was... I couldn't really pronounce, or I couldn't really say what I wanted to say. It wasn't coming out the way that it should have, but regardless. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? It is what it is. Uh, but thank you guys so much for all the wonderful questions. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you all tomorrow with my December favorites. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.